Many folks don't know the story of Premier. Premier Heating and Air was founded in 2001 with just a small group of people. Initially, Premier's handful of people went to work with a core value and set of principles based on a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. With one move in 2005 and then a leap of faith in 2010, Premier is now in its current location and now one of the largest heating and air companies in middle Georgia. Still, every day our people walk through our warehouse doors and into the doors of your home with the same core value. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Call Premier Heating and Air today and get your AC system checkup for just $49. Need a new system? Get up to $2,000 on qualified systems. Log on to Dublin.PremierIsHere.com. The choice is clear. Choose Premier. Premier Heating and Air, a locally owned and operated company. Welcome everybody. We are getting started down here at the Lawrence County Courthouse. I have with me the head of the Lawrence County Republican Party here, Bill. It's been a good election cycle and y'all just had y'all debate a couple weeks ago. Tell us why you chose to do that. Well. Um for our debate, for our forum, those uh, six races were going to be decided at this primary. They're decided today, so we wanted to educate all of the voters, Republican and Democrat alike, on uh, on the candidates. Let them come and listen to the candidates and uh, be an informed voter when you go to the polls. It's so important, you know, and I was looking at the numbers. We had a low turnout on early voting. They were telling me about 2,400 early voting. We're starting to get some numbers in on the board up here. We'll be sharing with you in just a few minutes. And uh, looks like we're going to have some close races. So those debates that we had and you had look like could be the deciding force. It could be. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, there were some good questions asked in both of them. They were a little bit different, yeah. and that was by design. And we didn't need them answering the same questions right. uh, twice. And so, uh, so uh, we polled, uh, you know, the, the voters and asked them, for some input, and we took that input and we uh, set the questions for each of the races, the candidates in each of the races to answer. Well, the job you do as head of the Republican Party here in Orange County is no easy task, and it's like changing hats ever so often. You got to play all these <coughs> different roles. Mm -hmm. What made you want to dive in and, and be uh, uh, in that part of the Orange County Republican Party? Well, I have been involved uh, in the politics since I retired from the Air Force in 2005. I think about 2006 I started. So I was a vice chair and a chair in Houston County, Warner Robins, and then uh, moved to, to Dublin and was a vice chair. And then uh, I'm in my second term as chair here. Uh, I enjoy it. Um, you know, my family's been in politics for a long time. I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before, but my grandfather worked for Eisenhower in 1954 doing the same kind of stuff that I'm doing now. So my family's been in politics for quite a long time and and uh, I enjoy uh, educating the voters on the candidates, making sure that uh, we have good conservative candidates that uh, support the Constitution and everybody's rights, constitutional rights. So it's important to me and, and that's why I do what I do. I'm going to go out on a limb here on television, so you may shoot me down, but I, I would <coughs> venture to say you probably have never missed voting in an election. A couple of times when I was overseas, uh -huh. uh, but other than that, no. <laughs> yeah, and I was telling somebody a while ago over here visiting, uh, I took my kids to the polls when they were seven, eight years old, and back then we'd pencil in little ovals with a number mm -hmm. two pencil. Boy, we come a long way. Uh -huh. but, and they would each vote for, I'd tell them, <coughs> vote for this lady, vote for this man. Mm -hmm. And uh, now they're uh, 38 and 40 years old. They've never missed an election. Yeah. So I say that to ask you this. Isn't it important to bring our kids up? Not only that, but uh, they are a product of early childhood development anyway. Yes. But isn't it important to teach them the civic <coughs> and the part about what makes this country tick? It is important because... Uh, the country ticks because of, of the people that uh, are interested enough in elections to get out and elect the kind of candidates that will protect their rights, that will uh, let us have a good economy, that will let us uh, prosper in all the ways that keeps the American dream uh, alive. And people are struggling with that right now. And, uh, and so uh, it's important for people to get involved in managing uh, you know, the community, the states, the counties, the country, because uh, 
politicians work for the people and you have to be involved and understand the platforms and understand the candidates to get the people in there that are going to do the right job for you yeah and all elections are important but these local elections we have tonight some statewide but these local elections about getting your road paved or fix the potholes or who's going to help with our children on the school board or are we going to hold our criminals accountable you know in the courtroom or the DA's office or whatever these really affect us and and all laws affect us uh, but you know these local elections really we see it I think more sometimes uh, than we do the, the national elections but you know I hear a lot of people this time moving ahead to the presidential election it's just they don't like so and so so they're just going to sit out that's a grave error isn't it? it is a grave error because uh <clears throat> you know, uh, one of the, the sayings you see a lot on the conservative side is the Republicans that stay at home elect Democrats. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, our job as the chairman and then, again, as uh, the 12th district chair uh, who has 24 counties, of which Lauren is just one of those counties, our job is, is to uh, get conservatives in office that are going to protect our rights and, uh, and help our country prosper. And so uh, staying at home doesn't help that. I'm surprised every election, and I don't mind helping, but many, many people, I dare say this time, 50 people would call me. I had a guy call me this morning, he said, James, and he's responsible for six votes, uh, his family. He said, tell me how I need to vote when I go this morning. You know, I don't mind helping somebody, but I believe, going back to what you said a while ago, you know, we need to be an informed voter. We need to be an educated voter. And everything on that ballot today, I take very seriously. Uh, because you read some of the amendments and things that are on there, those things are important to mm -hmm. to our everyday walk of life. But you know, and you know, I rather people vote, even though I like people vote the way I vote. You know, still, I really had rather you make a, a, a wise choice and go in there and vote your conscience instead of maybe voting my conscience all the time. Right. And to vote your conscience, you have to educate yourself yeah. on on what your choices are, yeah. and. Uh, as you said, you know, I always love it when people vote the way I vote, but yeah. but I spent a military career protecting yeah. everybody's right to vote as they please. That's right. But it needs to be an educated vote. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I, I, I walk through the, walk, the halls of uh, the VA often, and, you know, I stand in awe at these men that, that some of them gave limbs the ones not in there gave their lives, a lot of them, and then some, they look normal, and still you start a conversation and you find out early, they suffer with PTSD. So right. these, these people have given it all. They put it all on the line for us to be able to vote or right. to stand here tonight without any fear of reprisal about being here or, mm -hmm. or Sunday going to church or if you don't want to go to church. You have that right because of people like you that fought for it. And, and uh I always tell the people at the VA that I served because they went before me, Amen. and and uh, so I respected that. But yes, if they can go and spend months uh, in a combat zone to give you the right to go spend, spend 15 minutes or 30 minutes in a voting line, you need to take advantage of that right. And last thing, uh, with all the things going on in our country, and I know you fought for those people that are protesting for Hamas and, and you know, anti-Semitic things that are going on, even though people like us, I don't think you should hate anybody, first of all. Mm -hmm. I can't think of a person in the world I hate. I might not like their ways, but I don't hate anybody. But when you see the kind of things that's going on in the country, I know you fought for them too, but what's, without being specific, what's running through your mind? Well, uh, I did fight for their right to protest but I did not fight for their right to be violent in that protest. So they can protest all day long, and I'm okay with that. They need, they have a right to express their point of view. They yeah. do not have a right to damage property or to hurt people. And, and I didn't fight for that. Amen. Thank you, brother. Right. Always good to talk with you. Thanks. Thank you, brother. The weather's heating up here in middle Georgia, and the deals are hot at Dublin Nissan. So when you come in, look for the red tag specials like this Nissan Altima or the new restyled 2024 Frontier. So come into Dublin Nissan during our red tag sale and take advantage of 0% financing 
or up to $10,000 savings off of MSRP. At Dublin Nissan, get rates as low as 0% financing on the 24 Rogue. And remember, Don sells Nissan's well only at Dublin Nissan.